Can somebody say it's time to break free? So we're going back to cynicism so we can break free from cynicism so God can do what he wants to do with us here at ABC. Amen? Amen. So we're going to nullify this spirit so that God can move like he wants to move. Amen. 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 Don't you want him to move? Amen. Amen. I want him to move. Move. Amen. So, let's get started. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> cynical. You know when they go to throwing up their air quotes. That's cynicism. Amen. <laughs> cynical people miss God. Amen. I want to be around what God is doing. Anybody want to be around what God is doing? I come to ABC because I want to be around what God is doing. Because I believe God is doing something in this church. Amen. Amen. Will was, when he walked in, he looked, he said, man, all this started in a house. All of these people in a house. And that's where God started it. And God's hand's been on it ever since. Is it ever since? Ever since? What, which one is it? Ever, ever since? Ever. ever. God's hand been on it ever. Yes. Ever since. Amen. But it started in a house with 20 people. Amen. And God had a plan so that many families, not just in here, but all across the world, could be blessed by what is going on at Adam and Believers Council. Amen. Aren't you glad about that? That is so powerful to me. But I don't want to be a cynic because I don't want to be sitting back waiting for it to fail. Do you know a cynic? No matter what God is doing, they sit back and wait for it to fail? That's cynicism. They don't believe enough to recognize when he is moving and who he is moving through. A cynic don't know who God is using. Because they mad at everybody. You prayed for an answer, but you can't get it because you're mad at the person God gave it to. You prayed for healing, but you can't get it because you're upset with the person that has the anointing to heal you. <laughs> yeah, that's a cynic. You're mad at the wrong. Look at somebody say, You're mad at the wrong person. Man, you better get unmad if you want. See, you're going to end up missing God. John 7 and 1. Talks, these are the greatest cynics that ever lived. He said, after these things, Jesus walked in Galilee. For he would not walk in jury among the Jews because the Jews what? So the Jews was missing out on all the answers that they needed. Because they were trying to kill the word. The son of God couldn't walk among them. Because they wanted to kill him. Yeah, so cynical that they forfeit their opportunity to get the answers they need for everlasting life. Cynics look for problems instead of solutions. Amen. You know, you, every now and then you got to go on a, 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 a e-fast from social media, from devices and different things, or you, you will eventually develop an appetite for other folks' problems. Amen. You'll be entertained by junk other folks are in. Amen. And then you'll totally forget to pray for them and hope that they are better. You lose an appetite for even seeing people do good and start joking and jiving about the calamity that is upon them. I know I'm preaching in here. Yeah, yeah. The good news don't get many views and hits and likes. Now, folk like the junk. And so cynics look for problems instead of solutions. 
problem-based ministries. I don't want no ministry that's always talking about folks' problems. Amen. What's the solution? Amen. 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 Then, so when solutions come, their skepticism rejects it. So even when they do hear solutions, they reject it because they're too skeptical. Why would you come in here, a place of worship, and look for something wrong with it? You should be looking for what is right about it. Amen. 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 If some of y'all did this with your mother or your father, you'd forgive them. Yeah. You forgot you was a little kid once and somebody had to take care of you. You forgot you was a little kid once and somebody made sure you ate. They made sure you had clothes. They made sure you had somewhere to sleep. You forgot. So you're an adult and you mad at them, angry at them, but you're totally forgetting. When you were young and couldn't help yourself, somebody helped you. Amen. And mama may have been wayward, but she made sure you, she dropped you off in good care when she was off. I just, I, I hey, you, these, man, boy, don't you go to hell angry. You better start thinking, <laughs> thinking about the times when you couldn't help yourself. When you were truly helpless, somebody cared for you because you here. Amen. You wasn't raised by pandas. You was raised by a human. Somebody made sure you was okay. Yeah. But some folks just look for problems. So when the solution comes, they reject the problem because they're so used to being skeptics, cynics, doubters. Oh, it's too... You know, I know folks that messed their whole marriage up because the marriage was going too good. Yeah, that's the spirit of sabotage is what it is. You so used to drama that when things start going good, you purposely mess it up. Because it don't feel right. Oh, you'd rather, you'd rather beat the situation to messing it up so it don't mess up on you. Oh, this is going too good. Something bad got to happen, so let me go on and just blow it. Yeah, that's sabotage. That's a spirit. Yeah, because you grew up around drama. You saw your mom and daddy break up, whatever the case. So you just know this relationship. No, it just can't work. How you expect it to work? If you're a skeptic. If you're cynical. Matthew 12 and 38. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered saying, Master, we would, we would see a sign from thee. They lying. Jesus like, no, ain't no sign going to be given to you. I'm not wasting my signs on you. Y'all trying to kill me. Why would I show out for you and you still not going to believe? Yeah. Skeptics, cynics. The scribes and Pharisees were cynics that made a living fault finding and stirring strife. That's a bad place to be in when you make a living fault finding. You get no views and likes on your page until you upload other people's faults. You upload the, a scripture, few. <laughs> upload a, a message from God, few. But you upload somebody's junk, bam, bam, bam. They hitting your page. Making a living fault finding and stirring strife. Some folk just walk around with a spoon. Every church got them. I mean, they, they just bounce around the church finding the strife. They hear something. Ooh, what? What y'all talking about over here? Stick their nasty spoon in it. Stir it up. 
Yeah, just every church got them. Just all the mess that go down, their name is always in it. And they faithful. Faithful. First one here. Last one to leave. Faithful. Faithful. Because it's hard work finding strife. You got to make sure you here early and leave late. Or you might miss it. You don't have nowhere to put your stanky spoon. Now, cynics make a living finding fault and stirring strife. They pursued issues. The Pharisees pursued issues instead of solutions. They didn't want a solution. They went and got the woman that was caught in adultery. Do her outside. Ain't no solution for this. You just got to die. Picked up the stones and was finna kill her. Where was the man? He didn't drag him out. He's probably in cahoots with him. He probably knew something. You know how they do? They had something on them. So they left him alone. Poor girl threw her out in the street. About the stone. And Jesus said the most amazing thing he's ever said in the Bible to me. One of the most amazing things. He said, you, he was, without sin, cast the first stone. That's so brilliant. That's spiritually, hmm. that's just so above us. <laughs> I mean, because what could you do? They all threw the stones down. Couldn't do nothing. The Bible said Jesus just squatted down and just drew on the ground. Probably drew a, a smiley face. I'm about to get him. About to get him. They did it, Lord God. They opened the door. Here it go. <laughs> the takedown phrase. He without sin. Man, if you said that every morning, boy, do you know you'd keep your mouth off, folks? If you said that every morning, he without sin cast the first stone. Well, let me shut up. But they pursued issues instead of solutions. You know how I know they pursued issues instead of solutions? Because Jesus was the solution. They didn't want him. They wanted him dead. And he was the solution. I would have heard him say, he among you without sin cast the first stone. I'd have been his friend from then on. i have been like, y'all, this is the living word. This guy knows stuff that we don't. This is a prime example of cynicism, Matthew 23 and 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you them that are entering to go in. So you shut up the kingdom, trying to keep folks out by judging everyone, and you're not going. He said the harlots and the publicans going to go in before y'all. Folk that make a living in sin. Can I keep preaching? Matthew 7 and 7. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. This is a passage about hungering for more of God. That's, that's what it's about. And do you know you have to pray for God to give you hunger for him? Yeah. You know why? Because you have filled yourself up with so much stuff. You can say, okay, this week I'm going to go hard after God. But if you're still full of foolishness, you don't have no room for it. But he said, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Cynics are those that stop asking for things because they just lost faith in the process due to past disappointments. So you let what you went through stop you from asking God for things. You know, if you ask God the right way, you'll, get, you'll receive. Amen. Most folk don't want to give up something to get something. 
You know, when it comes to God, he wants to take something away from you to give you something. That's hard for some folks. Amen. But they just stopped asking for things because they just lost faith in the process due to past disappointments. They stopped seeking because of hurt and pain suffered from those they once trusted. That'll make you stop seeking. Then they stop knocking because they do not want the answer. Did y'all hear that? Folks stop knocking because they don't want the answer because the answer will require their blame to become shame. Yeah, folk don't want the answer. They'd rather just keep blaming somebody else. The answer is going to turn your blame into shame. It's going to humble you. Cynicism will cause you to avoid this step. Cynics, cynical saints pray without power. Okay, y'all going to wake up in here. I know y'all lost an hour. Some of y'all look so jive right now. Everybody stand up. Just stand up. Come on, everybody stand up. This is the jivest I've ever seen, y'all. Everybody look at y'all. I've been up all night. I didn't sleep last night. Because I didn't know what my daughter was going to do. Some of y'all slept. And y'all sitting there looking at me like, oh, will you please hurry up. Boy, don't you know I start slowing down. Amen. Now, come on, just shake it off. Shake it off. Come on, come on. Get some blood flowing in your own body. Okay, sit back down. Boy. You better look at me like that. that was, amen. Turn the hair off. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's punishment for me. I'm up here moving around and cracking jokes. Y'all sitting here sleepy head, amen. And, and, uh, oh, yes, Lord. That's right. I heard that, but yes. Mm -hmm. Did he preach this last week? I think I've seen this. I catch the video. It'll, it'll be out next week. I just catch it then. Wake up! You better wake up. <laughs> Wake up. I'm here there working hard. I'm sweating, Reggie. I'm sweating. Y'all chilling in the cut. Putting your hair over your eyes. I see you. Mm -hmm. Amen. My elders, I need y'all, man. Y'all can't now wait a minute. Cynical saints pray without power. There you go. I need to. <laughs> you know, if you get behind this, you'll wake up. <laughs> it's a good sermon, I promise you. It's a good sermon. Amen. Y'all so giant. Quit clapping. <laughs> this church. <laughs> And an African tell me the other day, sent me a voice message. He said, oh, some of these people are so jive. They're just so jive. I said, man, this doesn't spread all over the world. My goodness. They're just so jive. Cynical saints pray without power. Power, I mean, prayer is a formality to them, and they can pray profoundly. A cynical person can't nobody out pray them. Because they pray for show. You ask them to pray, oh, go on, everybody catch hands. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus. No greater name. Oh, guide me, all oh, ye great Jehovah. Take me through this barren land, God. Be over. Uh, you know God is looking at that church, and he's like, I, I refuse to go in there. I don't want to be in there. God says, no, I'm not. No. No, stop talking about me. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they can pray profoundly and don't believe nothing. 
Same person singing. Gah. You try to shake his hand. Oh, oh, brother, I'm not touching. COVID. You're the one. Why oh, you sung so hard, ash built up around your mouth. You was on your knees so long, you still like that. You walk like a flamingo. <laughs> and you scared of a... Don't touch me. Uh-uh. You try to hug him, how you doing? Uh -huh. What happened to the guy? Me, oh. What happened? But the cynical saints, they can pray profoundly. But because of their doubt, their prayers have no power. No power. Brother, I don't want you praying for me if you doubt me. I want you praying for me if you're scared. Brother, God has not given us a spirit of fear. You can't pray for me and you are afraid. I want that little kid boogeyman prayer. Get him, God. He is the closet. I don't want that. 2 Timothy 3 and 5, having a form of godliness, but what? Denying, Denying the power thereof. From such do what? Turn away. Get your hands off of me, priest. Turn it away. Most of them are super religious and can quote scripture, go on extended fast, and speak in tongues of men and angels. Some of these saints speak better tongues than English. And it ain't gibberish. It ain't a language either, but it just sounds awesome. Uh -huh. You'd be like, oh. <laughs> oh. 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 And hate everybody in the building. Hate everybody. Hate everybody. Get up to testify. <laughs> Thank the Lord for being here. <laughs> Can't look no other way. Can't, the mouth is permanently like that because you have looked like that. That's the bass mouth. The fish. I'm so happy to be among the saints. Girl, somebody lying. You ain't happy with that face. Amen. But speak in tongues of men and angels. But because of their skepticism, they missed the point. Amen. You missed the hope. You came to church to be a wonder, but you can't be a wonder in your own house. Amen. You came to church to show out and show your talent and your gift, but none of them operate in your home. Amen. You want the pastor to respect you, but your husband hates you. Because of their skepticism. They miss, you missed the whole point. I want church to be an extension of my home. Amen. When my kids coming home, be like, who was that preaching? Was that daddy? Oh, God. You talking about drinking and cussing, daddy? I don't want, No! 1 Corinthians 13 1, though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not love for the brethren, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Somebody like brass sound good though. Yeah, but it don't last. Once it sounds off, that's all there is to it. Can I keep preaching? Ooh, there's some folks. A cynic always sees what's wrong with others and highlights the struggles of others, but refuse to deal with themselves. They always have an issue with someone doing what they have an issue behind. So whatever happened to them, they go find the folks that are doing what they did, single them out, and condemn them to hell, and never deal with themselves. 
Yeah, a cynical religious spirit is the worst thing to have in the body of Christ. Amen. Cynical religious spirit, chances are you going to hell. Yes, sir. Because you don't have faith in what could save you from it. Yes, Amen. Amen. James 1, 23 and 24. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass for he, or a mirror. For he sees himself, goes his way, forgets what he saw. That's somebody that can't ever deal with themselves. They're a hearer only, not a doer. Amen? Y'all still awake? Summary! Look at somebody say, breaking free. You made it through. Amen. Now get, go on and do this. Wake up. Amen. Summary. Break it free. Now, I'm going to give you 10 points to help you break free. Of course, there are some others, but these are the ones that I believe are going to help you break free from this cynical spirit so that you can be a part and play a part in the move of God. Amen. You come to this church because you have confidence that God is moving in here. Am I right? You don't just have a free Sunday, do you? Number one, ask God to show you the event or trauma that caused your cynical outlook. You'll stay like that until you figure out why you're like that. Yeah, I know that sounds like psychology and all that. No, that's just the human brain 101. That's the way you work. That's the way God made you. Amen. We all talked about it last week about remembering. God is big on remembering things. Well, this is something you need to, this is key to remember. You got to pinpoint when the event or the trauma happened that caused you to become cynical. It's usually one big thing. One big thing happened that brought cynicism into your life, into your outlook on things. So now you pick people apart. You look for errors. You look for trouble. You look for negativity. You look for something that someone shouldn't be doing instead of focusing on what people should be doing. So you need to find out what happened, when it happened, and how. And it, that caused your cynical outlook. Amen? Amen. Number two, repent, forgive. Reconcile, seek wisdom or counsel, whatever is necessary to deal with what happened to you so you can move forward. Amen. So whatever happened, yeah. repent, forgive, whatever you got to do. Once God shows it to you, ask God, so how do I handle this? Maybe somebody did something. Maybe you don't have access to that person. What do I do? How do I handle this? God will show you. God is eager to show you. He wants to help you. He said, no good thing will I withhold from you. I want you to be better. So once you identify, call it out, he's going to give you instruction. You know, some folk need counseling. Some black folks need counseling. Amen. Don't just lock Uncle Rufus up in the room. Slide his food under the door. That man need counseling. They done, done it so much, they didn't put it in movies. We'll go down that hallway. He, he can hear footsteps. Who's in there? <laughs> Uncle Rufus will chase you in his drawers. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny whiteys. He come running down the hall. <laughs> now, now he do it on purpose. <laughs> He ain't got nothing else to do. What else he gonna do in that hall? You done locked him up in his room. That's the only fun he get. He hear little kids. Oh, yeah, it's all over the door. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> Y'all start little kids betting. I bet you 10, 
sense that you won't go down there and count the five and then come back. <laughs> One, two, <laughs> He got little Jimmy, he got him. Well, y'all shouldn't have been, you know, Big Mama. Y'all shouldn't have been playing. You shouldn't have been playing. Don't be playing with my baby in there. Yo, baby, he crazy! You need counseling. Uncle Rufus need a counselor. He needs somebody to work through that stuff. That happened to him. Amen. But you got to get it worked out. Once you find out what caused you to be st- <laughs> That might be what caused it. <laughs> Somebody in the back. <laughs> How you know? <laughs> Re- repent, for- <laughs> forgive, re- reconcile, seek wisdom and counsel. Get help. Look at somebody say, get some help. And it's no shame in getting counseling. I've had to get counseling. You got to go get counseling. And folk can do some stuff to mess your head up. And don't walk around with a messed up head. Get it fixed. Because you're going to treat everybody bad and mess your whole life up. Amen. Amen. Folk come to, and it ain't always spiritual. You need counseling. But can you cast this out of me? No, because it's you. I can't cast you out of you. You need counseling. Amen. There ain't nothing wrong with it. Matter of fact, folk might be proud of you that you did that. I know I would. Save me some time. My God. Amen. Number three. Think on godly things each and every morning when you awake. Do you hear me? When you awake, get out of that bed. Say something positive. Think something positive. Amen. Listen to something, read something, see something from God to set your day on course. Play worship music, sing songs, memorize scripture etc so that you can start your day without a cynical outlet amen don't wake up from a bad dream and that's your whole day number four be open to rebuke and reproof listen to somebody listen to somebody stop defending yourself when others identify your cynicism Somebody come to you and identify that you're being a cynic? Quit defending yourself. Oh, I mean, you know, I mean, I, brother, you, you, you're a cynic. So let's, let's see what we can do to stop that. You don't have to defend yourself. Cynics don't like authorities. So this is something that has to change quickly. They don't like authority. So when authority come to them, they automatically upset because they was already upset because they're a cynic. It's almost impossible to pastor a cynic. They'll be in your church, but you can't pastor them. Well, number five. This will be the healing of somebody's nation. Take your mouth off others. All cynics are busybodies. That's how you get it stirred up. You're a busybody. All cynics are busybodies. When you are entertained by meddling in the business of others, you are strengthening your cynicism and will eventually develop an appetite for negativity and railing accusations. Then that's all you want to hear. Number six. Is this helping anybody? Do I need to make y'all stand up again? Somebody like, but it's so cozy. It's all 
dark and smoky in here. <laughs> the devil trying to put you to sleep so you don't hear this. Amen. Tell the devil, nope, not today, Sandman. In the name of Jesus. Number six, counter every negative thought with a positive word. Uh-oh. That's a good one. Uh, every negative thought, before you release that negative thought with the wrong word, speak a positive word. Because the thought starts in the head before you speak it, right? When you think doubt, speak God's promise. Eventually, you will change your thinking by your speaking. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, not the thoughts. Man, that was good. Ooh, if y'all wasn't sleeping, y'all would have clapped. So far. Number seven. Remove yourself from the company of cynics, naysayers, and skeptics. Hey, man, why do you want to be around a bunch of doubting and side talk? That's not helping you. That's pulling you down. If you have been a cynic, for a long time, more than likely, you have surrounded yourself with it. You've attracted it. You got to have somebody to gossip to. So you surrounded yourself with it. In the case of family, where your family know you is running your mouth all the time, change how they know you. Their opinion of you is based on the you they have come to know. <laughs> That's it. They only know you because... That's you. You change it, they're going to know you as the changed you. I know I'm preaching. Amen. Do not practice sin. Uh oh. Person hiding, slipping, and sliding in sin is going to be a cynic. Because you're looking for folks that's slipping and sliding like you. So you can feel better about what you're doing. Fornication, adultery, murder, etc. Don't practice none of those. Yes, but don't forget the emotional sin. See, this is where they, you know, who oh, I ain't, I ain't out there now, I ain't doing that. But the, <laughs> the emotional sins, these are the ones God said He hated. Amen. Hatred, malice, envy, jealousy, wrath, vengeance, gossip, slander. Don't practice those either. Amen. Don't be measuring sin with your measuring stick trying to say what you're not doing and that makes you different from somebody else. No! Don't do none of it! A cynic is usually hiding something. That's why they're cynical. Number nine, plant yourself in a fellowship that addresses these spirits regularly. Amen. Amen. You can't just sit on the couch eating Doritos, watching service. <laughs> no, you need to be somewhere. Amen. 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 Kids crying, you yelling at them, yelling at the dog. All that going on and you in service at home. Turn it up, I can't hear. <laughs> Listening to service. No, plant yourself in a fellowship that addresses these spirits regularly. Amen. Amen. The more beauty you surround yourself with, the more beautiful you become. Yeah. Amen. And finally, pray for God to restore the joy of your salvation when you first believe. Let's go back to when I first believed. Your innocent, childlike faith was overcome with skepticism and cynicism. There was a time when you believed God could do anything. Now you believe he can do some things. Pray for restoration and to overcome all evil with good. Amen? Amen. Amen. You made it. Finally. Amen. Philippians 1 and 9. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more 
and more in knowledge and in all judgment. Your love may abound more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. You know, the older you get, the more love you interject in judgment. Man, I just preached in here. Yeah, when you was young, everybody, uh uh-uh, uh-uh, you was judging everybody the same. You get older, you start, you know what? I think I'm going to love them through this. I think I'm just going to show them a little more love. I think I'm going to put the bloody axe down and stop chopping heads. Yeah, your love is going to abound more and more in knowledge and in all of your judgments. All you got to do is live a little while. The longer you live, the quicker you are to forgive folks. I'm preaching in here. That ye may approve things. You know, I use myself as an example. You know, when I first started pastoring, I had an ex. And I was chopping heads off because I'm straight off the road, preaching, doing the truth on hip-hop, not trusting nobody. Everything. I, I had, I, hey, I had both eyes open. Amen. Me and Eddie got into it when he first got here. We, we just got into it. He had that New York thing on him. And he sat me down. He's like, you got a problem with me? I'm like, I don't know you. What you do? Like, what did you do? I mean, you just be, I mean, we just, then, then we go at it. We went at it. When he first got here, because I, I was no nonsense at the time. Now I handle things a little different. Because I'm older. I've been doing this a little while. And I handle things different. I mean, me and Eddie got it straight. We got it straight, didn't we? Oh, okay. You, you, you good? Y'all good? Y'all all good? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I mean, he's one of my one of my closest friends now. But but we did. It was like that. But I didn't know what I was doing. He didn't know what he was doing. Amen. And so, but through grace, grace and learning and getting older and experiences, now I handle things a little different. Amen. I don't walk around assuming the worst. I don't walk around assuming everybody's trying to kill me. Amen. You come off the road traveling in all the different continents and all these different venues and folks, and they got to have security. Folks saying they're going to kill you, sending your letters and stuff. We, gonna be, we got a sniper in the audience. All this, they were sending me all that kind of stuff. So I walk out... <laughs> God said, <laughs> don't, uh, uh, shoot. what, <laughs> what, what, <laughs> I had to walk around like that, I wasn't traveling with no security or nothing, and he said, I was in Brooklyn, I think I was in New York, and he saw me, he said, he tried to speak to me, I looked at him like, eh. what you want, what you want, what do you want? <laughs> I'm five foot nothing. I have to defend myself. Man, please. Yes, I had an attitude problem. Real bad one. Amen. That's how I had to protect myself. But then when I was called a pastor, God had to take all that out of me. Change the way I saw people because they are his people. I, I can't, you can't pastor for God if you don't fall in love with the people you pastor. You can't do that for God. Now, I love everybody. I be defending y'all when you don't need to be defended. Oh, I be taking up for y'all. Oh, man. Folk come to me. Oh, she just a witch. Oh, maybe she's Glinda. She's a good witch. She's a good witch. <laughs> we can work with that. We, we, we can work with that. <laughs> Amen, because, man, I love all y'all now. So I'm just, amen. But I had to learn that. It was totally different. I mean, me, me and my wife are here because we want to be here. I asked my wife, I said, I'm going to fly you out there. You can be there by Vicky's side if you want to, whatever. My wife wanted to be here this morning. I'm like, no, I want to be here. I need to be here. We'll get out there. That's what she said. We'll get out there. That's how much she loves y'all. That's how much we love this. It's not a show. I'm not benefiting from it for it to be a show. Amen. Amen. So it had to be genuine. But I I did. I had to get rid of that old axe slinging me. I cut your head off. (laughs) Amen. 
But God had to do that. And over time, now when I'm in, a, in the judgment seat, I'm adding way more love and less condemnation. But you got to learn that. You got to learn that. That ye may approve things that are excellent. That ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Man, he wants you to be without offense. Don't get, look at somebody and say, don't get offended. Don't get offended. Somebody offended and he yelled at us. They going to start a page online. He yelled, I was in there. I was in there. He yelled, he made everybody stand up. He called us jive. What kind of pastor would call the people jive? <laughs> Philippians 1 11. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. So we want to be without offense. And we want to judge with love and be filled with the fruits of righteousness. All of that is the opposite of cynicism. You can't be a cynic if you feel with love, joy, peace, long suffering. How are you a cynic and you long suffering? It's impossible. Goodness, meekness, faith, temperance, all of these things. We need to be filled with these things and drop the cynicism. Amen. Everyone stand. Just go home and take a nap. Ain't nothing like a Sunday nap. Ain't nothing like a Sunday nap. It's, that, that hit a little different, don't it, Martell? It hit, it hit different on Sundays. One of them old unexpected naps. You wasn't even trying to do it. You trying to watch, watch the game, and it just hits you. Is anybody like me, do you wish you could be that sleepy at night? Am I the only one? I'll be in the bed. I'll be like, now where did that, where did that, where did that chair sleep go? The game sleep. Let me create everything. They'll turn the game on, get in the chair. I'll be, <laughs> it just, it ain't the same. Amen. But we want to pray against this spirit seriously. Pray against this spirit of cynicism so that God can make us different. See things different so we can expect his move if that's you just come on up these things i read off if you need answers to any of them you need these things to manifest in your life just come on up come on up C cynicism just come on up amen. amen religious spirit doubting spirit you could just go through so many things sometimes that man i, th I think the bad before i think the good because so much bad has happened God wants to take that away from you. He wants to change that. Amen. He wants to change that. I want to believe God for something. And I don't want to let go until he blesses me with it. I want that kind of faith. That's that childlike faith. I need that restored. I need restoration, God. I need the faith I had when I first believed. Hallelujah. That's what I need. That's what I need. Hallelujah. 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 Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you for this message. Thank you for this these tips, God, that will help us get rid of cynicism. Father God, we don't want to root for the bad, but we want to be on the side of good. And we want our thoughts to be good. And we want our thoughts to be in line with your thoughts, God. We want our actions to be aligned with your actions. So, Father, wherever it came from, however it got in us, may have been experiences, past experiences, may have been someone in our family may have been something we went through at a young age, whatever it was that brought this cynicism, God, we pray right now that we can reconcile that situation. God, that you can heal that situation. God, that you can show us if it's something we need to do to fix that situation. Whatever it is, God, 
We want to go back to that situation and get freedom so that we won't doubt you, so that we won't doubt your process, so we won't doubt your preacher, so we won't doubt the place we are in. We won't doubt the fellowship. We won't doubt the word. We won't doubt our prayers. Father God, so that we will have confidence and not cynicism and skepticism. So help us with that situation, whatever it is. And Father, continue to help us to speak the right things. Even when there's doubt in our heart, even when it looks hopeless, let us speak the right things. God, so that they can be manifested in our lives. Now, just lift your hands, everyone that came up. And Father God, I pray right now that the anointing that is in this place from this message will rest upon everyone whose hands are lifted. The anointing to overcome cynicism. You gave this message to bring this power in this place so that your people could be fed and nourished and changed. So change us, God right now in the name of Jesus change that attitude change that outlook change that language change those words change those feelings those emotions change that doubt change that fear God change us right now in the name of Jesus we receive it right now in the name of Jesus we receive it come on just tell them I receive it I receive it right now I receive it right now I receive it right now. An outpouring of your spirit, Lord. So every fruit will be active in our lives. Hallelujah. 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 We receive it right now. We receive it right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 On your way to your seat, just hug somebody. What do we say? Don't say nothing. Just hug them. Amen. Hug somebody. Show them love in this fellowship. Love covers a multitude of faults hallelujah 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 you know on your way to your seats I just want to tell some of y'all something I'm so proud of some of y'all in here as I was up here praying I just remember who you were when you first got here and I see what God has done in your life and I'm so proud of you I'm so proud of you amen in the end times you elected to allow God to take his scalpel and cut something out of you to make you who you are now. Praise God for that. Come on, give yourselves a hand. Amen.